everybody. Welcome back to the Cognitive Awareness with a Touch of God podcast. This is going to be episode number six, and we're calling it Behind the Mask. Due to the length of this recording, we're going to put this into two parts. So you're listening right now to part one. We will have the installation of part two immediately after this. My partner in life, my partner in spirituality, my partner in God, is going to be with me on this podcast. Her name's Laura Lee. We've been working together over the past three to four years on our spirituality, our understanding of the God consciousness, and a little bit deeper inside our our own personal belief systems. And in doing so, what we've been able to do is, is create this podcast series, Cognitive Awareness, uh, mostly through my experiences with retraining my brain, but also with her wisdom. So during this podcast, you're going to hear a lot of things uh, pertaining to what the mask really is, how we hide behind the mask, and so on. I think when I when I saw that that post from that girl and her struggle, I'm struggling. I'm done all this. This is what I've come through, and I feel like hell, and my life's gone to. Sh- but look at me, I'm pretty. Yeah, I think that's kind of what we were looking at doing. Okay. Maybe we can call it the mask. That would be a nice title for the episode. Today's talk is going to be about being the mask or hiding behind the mask. We're just going to ad lib today. Yeah. We're going to throw this in. It's, it's a bonus for all our listeners. That's the hope. So the concept behind the mask is real simple. It's it's almost like we take ourselves and put ourselves into the Halloween. I think we talked about this. Didn't we talk about it uh, on the, we talk about the Star Wars stuff and the other the time. one? Okay. So I'll just run through it now. So the other day I was looking on a social media tool. I'm not going to mention the name of it. I was on the social media and reading something that a younger person posted. It was in a recovery status. So she's recovering. She had gone through a cold turkey recovery. She had been successful for several months and she slipped a little bit and then she got back on it. She started recovering again. Um, She was talking about how she lost her children. The police came in, DCS or whatever you call it, wherever you're from, the child protection services came in, took her kids away from her. The good thing was they ended up with her mother. The bad thing was that she had to get herself into a situation where her kids had to be taken away. But she explained in a few paragraphs how her life was really twisted, turned, and upside down because of her addiction and her path in her addiction. Unfortunately, at the bottom of it, or in her pictures, the images of her, she was showing an image of herself when she was addicted, and then an image of herself when she's off her addiction. But when you look at the pictures, you're not looking at the person. So she didn't show her face. Did she show her pa- no, face she, as an addict? No, she did her face as an addict, but she was focused on her body. As an addict. As an addict. Okay. Then she showed another face of her as a recovering addict with her face but focusing on her body. Very typical in today's world of men and women. You see somebody that's trying to say, hey, I'm doing great. I'm I'm having a blast. My life is fantastic. Or take a look at my body. I've got these ripped stomach muscles and my butt is awesome and my thighs are awesome. And my... Thanks for looking at my but I'm struggling. But I'm struggling. So as I was reading the post, trying not to look at the pictures, I was trying to get a feel of the person behind the post. Unfortunately, it just kind of seemed, I'm not going to assume on this, but from reading the responses, the replies to her post, a majority of them were, wow, you're beautiful. My God, you look sexy. And Really? Was that the goal of the person posting? To say, look at me, I'm sexy. I am a basket case. I can't get my together. I don't know what's happening in my life and I don't know Mm -hmm. how how to be healthy and happy and off of my addictions. But man, take a look at my body. I'm sexy and I'm available. I don't know what that is with people. I, and maybe we're presumptuous as well. I mean, it's really hard to say when we're in our addiction, when we're out of our addiction. What it, the picture represents is, even while addicted, please still look at me. I'm a mess and look at me. The other picture is, look at me. I'm healing, but yet look at me. Right. But it's all external looking. You know, it's yeah. it's still needing to be validated either way you look at it. So wouldn't it be really fantastic to see that these groups wouldn't allow for those kind of pictures because the focus gets taken away from, especially the addict. I mean, there's not just drug addiction. I mean, we got sex addiction. You know, you've got all, a range of addictions. Social media addictions. So even when, when people are going through these addictions and they're looking at these profiles and they're saying, aren't I skinny? So then you got somebody else who feels less than because don't you know they're clean now and they weigh 300 pounds and they don't feel good. Right. You know, and a lot of the comments that I see on these pages are filled with people that are saying, yeah, I'm 150 pounds heavier than I was when I was an addict. Now the question would be, well, how do you feel about that? How, how do does you that feel actually about you? make you feel? Is it okay that you're 
not in shape, so to speak? Is it okay that you've ballooned? Is it okay that you've, you've done whatever or you're not vomiting anymore, whatever the addiction was creating? Is it okay? Is that the point you're trying to make? I gained weight, but I'm okay. I eat too much, but I'm okay. Do we see those posts, though? Because we just had a a guest come in and was talking to us, and he was actually talking about how much he doesn't like social media because he knows the people that are on his pages, and he knows their life is a mess, and they're portraying themselves as, look at me and look at my family. Don't we look whole? Don't we look completed? And don't we look like we're having fun? And the truth is, is if you're not being authentic, no matter what, it's going to be seen and known by somebody. Right. Right. The shyster always gets ousted, if you will. And if we look back at the last 20 years of television and look at what direction we took, what direction have we gone from entertainment? We used to have sitcoms and dramas and stuff like that. Now we're into this thing called reality TV, which if you know what reality TV really is behind the scenes, you know it's not real. They edit, they change, they manipulate, and they do stuff. Correct. We've also seen a lot of people that are, you know, like these singers, right? These television shows where people get to demonstrate their singing abilities and they get to say, oh, I've got a great voice. I don't have a great voice. For the first portion, probably for the first 10 to 12 years of those shows, most of their viewership came when they were not good, when they were being ridiculed and told that they shouldn't even be up on the stage. Their voice is so terrible. But people were doing it. Why would we as a society want to watch something where people are being ridiculed or their family members are putting them on a stage when their family members may very well know this is all for fun? Well, funny thing that you say that what actually came to my mind and and whether it's true or not, it's not like I'm always politically correct, but I can do my best to kind of fish through. I think it's it came about the time where Vietnam was happening and it was the first use of actually showing what was happening in the real world. Seeing the truth. So we had a social media aspect on the television television to see what was happening. And I believe, and and my heart goes out to the veterans um, and those um, who are even still out there, you know, fighting for our our rights. Uh, But if you look at what we did, we inundated people with information and visuals on pain, destruction, grief, and we got caught in those moments. And then, of course, media will always put it out there to twist it to their needs and and the desirability of ratings. And that Mm -hmm. was the beginning of where ratings came in and who was it NBC or ABC or the agenda had flipped. Right. Right. So when these guys came home, the media had flipped it to where they were baby killers. Right. You know, and I mean, how judgmental of people are we? And maybe it's not that it didn't take place, but the fact is that's not what they wanted to be doing with their life. Right. That wasn't what they really wanted to be doing, and yet we portrayed them in a certain way. So in media aspects, whether it's social media or news media, we kind of set the table. You know, we set the table when it comes to what everybody should look like. Everybody should be thin. Everybody should be this. And if you're not this, this is what we call beautiful today. There's the trends. Right. You know, and if you're not fitting in with the trends, you know, you said, how does, is she okay or he okay feeling the weight of being 150 pounds more uh, and being clean? Does that feel good? What does it feel like? Right. Where's the emotion behind the information? Right. And when we were so saturated with this stuff, what did uh, United States feel Mm. when we first began with this? What did we feel we judged before we knew the truth, before we knew the individual stories? And isn't that what we do now? So people are scared to put the truth out there because people judge. That's what we do. Well, the simple solution would be don't get on social media. Don't put it out there. Don't turn on your television. Don't listen to the news. If you struggle with the understanding of what's behind the story... What's behind the person? What's behind the picture? What's behind the video? If you're trying to assume and you put your judgments on it, the only way that it can be cleared and clean is either A, go to the source. Who is this person? Do you know them? If I know them personally, I know what by being a friend of theirs, I know what's happening behind the scenes. So I know that on their page, it's not really depicting what's really going on. But does that mean we have to even care about that? Does it mean we need to engage? Does it mean we need to say anything? Do we need to respond like, thumbs up, uh, follow? Should we heart you? Yeah, or any of this stuff. Maybe we we should show you an angry face because we know the truth behind. The fact is, is... As we are destroying ourselves with social media? Social mayhem. Social mayhem, yeah. So with that understanding, I mean, we can take a look at how this is going to be playing out moving forward. I mean, here we are doing a podcast, hoping people listen to us because we're trying to give something a little bit more than just, hey, listen to us. Listen to us. We're going to laugh. We're going to swear. We're going to do whatever. We're trying to get a little deeper on this. 
We're trying to bring people into a healthier place. The idea is understanding that each one of us is an addict. The range of being an addict uh, varies. It's not just drug addiction that gets us into these situations, although it's a, it's a big source for many, if not most of us. Addiction to attention. I mean, that's what we're really talking about, that first topic, or these people putting pictures about themselves. Why are they addicted to attention? When you look deeper inside it, it's a good possibility that maybe they didn't get any attention when they were a child. Maybe they were left behind, left into the corner. Here's your television. Figure out your life by yourself. Feed yourself. You know, set yourself by yourself and figure that out. I've got better, more important things to do than pay attention to my child. I think we can all experience that in our lives or we can all sense or feel a bit of our lives where, where that kind of thing has happened. And the more we want to look for attention, probably the more wounded we were with regards to those feelings of being unloved or unwanted. I believe that that's the biggest aspect of any of us being addicts is we don't feel like we are worthy, that we can't validate our own self. So we're looking for others to validate us as well. And that's why we get into cliques or gangs, any of that stuff, because we need somebody to validate that we're okay because we just don't feel it. But isn't it funny though, is we spend our whole life trying to be validated by others and we don't feel that people gave us enough attention. <laughs> I don't feel that my parents gave me enough attention because they were so mixed up in their life. And you know, for, for me personally, I carried with myself all those years of, man, you should have been a better parent. There was no reason why you should have done that to me. There was no reason why those things should have happened to me because you were responsible right. for my life. And you know, for me, it's God entrusted you to take care of me, to value me. As somebody said, we live with agendas, right? And that's kind of how we do life. Everybody that we come in contact with, we have an agenda if we keep them in our life. You know, how can you suit me? How can you serve me? How can you validate me? How can you love me? You know, what can you provide for the family? Or how can I family? do something for you as well? Well, and ab but yeah. yes, um, but yet still, even though we want to do something for others, the truth is, is most of us are going into a situation, will this benefit me? Mm -hmm. What I do mean, I get to gain what out do of I, this? What yeah. am I going to get out of it and what am I willing to give up? But it also, it depends on the level that you're at with it. Am I in a deep need for attention? Am I in a deep need of gaining something? Or, or do I just want or to do be... do I want to coexist with people in my life that I'm okay whether they come or go? Right. Am I grounded within myself or am I really just needy? Because it shows us in our relationships where we are in that. Right. And that's, I think, where, where all of this comes down to is, is where are we with ourselves? It's always everything that we're talking about on all of our podcasts, everything that we try to do on social media, we're trying to educate people and teach people that it isn't about anything that's outside of us, that everything is within us. And if we're not in balance with what's inside us, not a happy person as us, then we're going to be seeking out that external thing. We get to wonder today and with each relation and relation, meaning not even somebody's close to you, somebody who crosses your path in a day, am I being a reflection or, or am I being a projection? Where am I in this? Mm. Because if I'm having a good day and people are coming to me and it's a very good day and they're complimentative or, or just being lovey or they're smiling and sharing their presence, that means I'm doing good today. I'm pretty grounded in myself. I'm doing well, but there are those days where somebody will cut you off in the road or somebody will cut in front of you, you know, in a store or somebody will be abusive to somebody and maybe not even to you, but you witness it. Right. Um, you wouldn't be seeing it if somewhere along your journey, that projection got a little bit tweaked in your own life. Right. We wouldn't be witnessing all these things if... The politics, the wars, the, the ugliness, the murders, the, you know, the shootouts and all the things that are happening. If we were working more with ourselves and trying to better ourselves and be a more happier person, right? Absolutely. When it comes to a social media, so to give you an example, for me, I've had a, a social media for quite a few years and I didn't even actually start using the computer until 2006. Um, we got, I got into a social media platform in 2006 to protect my children because it was of the age I knew could transpire. So I got into it for one reason and ended up have, having a, experiences that happened with that. And it, it was a, an absolute learning curve for me to see how untruthful people really were. The stalking potential? Well, absolutely the stalking potential. And the fact was, is, you know, even being an addict, I still had some morals and, and stuff that you kind of had to keep your checks and balances. Mm. Um, but I saw that people weren't utilizing those skills and I saw another side. So I was seeing all these things. I'm a fairly aggressive human and my tongue will just say whatever it needs to say. Yeah, you're pretty vocal. I'm pretty vocal. <laughs> you can ex be expressive I'm at very, times. yeah, okay, that's a better word. I am very expressive and so I will just kind of put stuff out there and people will either handle it or they won't. And I've got to say that for the most part, 
my experience with what I put out there wasn't that bad. You know, I never got bashers coming into me with what I was putting out there, mm -hmm. but I've always been kind of deep. I'd be frivolous, 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 and then I'd post something that had some depth to it because I wanted people to know that I was also playful. Mm -hmm. So my thought and my authentic self is what I was trying to put out there. Right. This is who I am. Right. And whether you know me or not, I'm pretty truthful. I'd like to believe that the majority of people that are out there are authentic, but... But it's the truth is, is, is they're not. So as Bear and I start bringing our worlds together, um, and he's got a platform of his own, and I've got my own platform, and he decided one of the platforms was having a glitch in the matrix, so that platform was going to go away for him. And so when he built a new platform... He decided he was going to pick and choose who was going to be available to feel him. Uh, whatever he put out there or, you know, it was more of us together showing pictures of us and where he's going and the things that he loves to do. So he would put that out there. And the engagements were more about he would see things that were pretty cool. But he would also notice if he wasn't very... Balanced? That's, mm -hmm. No, not balanced. But if he wasn't very engaging and didn't play the game oh, along right, with the right. social media... Play the social media game, I wouldn't get a lot of responses. He wouldn't get a lot of responses. Yeah responses out of it. And then with me, the cool thing was, is there was a period of time where I got just a bunch of jokesters, which made it so much fun for me to engage in. And then every now and again, you'd get the political people that would come in. They would never do my page dirty. Right. But I also would come across it here and there. It's never been something that was overbearing. And I don't engage with political content in any way, so I'll never go political. But I've always seemed to have come across really engaging and really loving people. Mm. I've never had the bashers. And I do have friends that share on social media platforms and they get absolutely trashed and bashed and... Right. And very aggressive. Yep. I have to look at that and say, what is behind the character putting out the information? Right. What is it that you're putting out there that can get that kind of response? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Remember, if we're only a reflection or a projection, isn't it interesting how that kind of comes back? Isn't right. that interesting in itself? Yeah. If if Just, we're struggling, the responses that we're going to get might be mirroring that struggle. Well, absolutely. And how many times are people going to say, "Well, how may I be of service?" Mm -hmm. How might I help you through your struggle? I actually come across that if, you know, if I'm having a little bit of a tweak or something, putting something out there, maybe that I even shouldn't put out there, I will get absolutely loving responses. I'm having one of these kind of days, you know, I'm having these kind of bleak days. But notice that when we do try to respond to something that's controversial, it becomes either they love it or they hate it. Yeah, I don't get a lot of that. No, well, because we haven't been doing a lot of it lately. I got to tell you, if I'm not, if I'm against something, I'm not going to put something out there Remember and the say Kentucky I'm going to... Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? I'm going to hate that? it. What? Remember Kentucky Fried Chicken? Yes. How it went out of business? Yes. And how those people painted it. And remember how you responded to that? And then that local oh, dude. Oh, yes. Okay, you see what I'm saying? I'm trying to explain. Oh, it's it's the, the controversy whether or not we're trying to be in a controversial post. Are you putting stuff out there that is unconscious, even mm -hmm. and playful? Because I, I did make a comment. It was pretty playful. And one of the, the local characters in town actually said, well, you know. That's calling the, the kettle black yeah. or something, right? Well, yeah, this Kentucky Fried Chicken here that was locally um, proprietized. And, and they actually, they went out of business and they painted it. And I thought it was spectacular. Well, they did painting, a great job. Let's call it uh, graffiti. No, no, no. They did a fantastic. They painted it, and then people came in and they drew all over it. Oh, and for me, I was so affected by that vandalized appearance. I struggled with it. I mean, because I was raised in the streets. You know what I mean? So when I saw that, it was like that wound came back to me. Mm -hmm. So when I put it on social media, I was pretty much putting it out there. Wow, it's it's just too bad that this has happened. I said on the brighter note, though, there's an actually a one way around to where you can come through the driveway. Um, It's because it's like an in and out. You can only go around one way and, and come out in order to, to come out of the compound. Well, I actually went around the opposite direction. I could drive through the wrong way through the drive through And one of the locals, you know, see cart and he's like, well, you know, you're calling the kettle black because you're doing the same type of thing by saying, but look at me, I got to go through the drive through the wrong way. And they're actually painting graffiti. It's right. not he, that he was too far off base. Right. And that's the truth of it is I had to recognize, ooh, look at me. Look at my projection right there. Right. I'm showing a negative analogy on what I find that's disturbing. And yet I'm still 
not vandalizing, but it's not far from it. Do you know what I mean? If it were a business that we're operating, that would have been a that a would have wrong been a bad. So I had yeah. I came back yeah. and I said, well, you, I do understand what you're saying, and I totally take note on that. Um, but you do understand also that the place is like closed down, and I think he even deleted me. But it it affected him. Right. It did affect him. So that was the only time really that I've had. I was just kind of using that as an example as to how something possibly innocent can be taken completely wrong or incorrectly, and, and yet so right. So yeah. in that. Even though I had taken it and taken responsibility for the actions that I had displayed, because I had to be accountable for that one. Right. You know, it wasn't like it was terrible, but the fact is, I was in the wrong. I felt that I was. Yeah. And so I took note on that. But and the things that we put out on social media, do we think about stuff that we put out there? And are we actually posting something that's true to us? Are we actually putting something out there for people to see, hear, watch? Is it the true self or are we just trying to put the mask on us? All right, folks, this is the end of part one of this episode, Behind the Mask. We'll be continuing on to part two on the next podcast.